I wish I may, I wish I might. Have the wish, I wish tonight. That was what my dad and I would recite every night before I went to bed. I had it painted on my wall next to my window. That way, I can see the stars as we say it together. He always told me to keep making those wishes, keep dreaming those dreams. And one day, I'll figure out how to turn, turn them into reality. One night, I asked my dad, what does he wish for? He tickled me with his chin and said, every night, I wish and I pray that I'll be able to do everything I can to make you, your brothers, and your mom happy. My dad was a master sergeant in the Air Force. He was assigned to the 15th Air Mobility Operations Squadron at Travis Air Force Base in California. His name was Jude Mariano. When I was 13 years old, my dad was sent off to yet another deployment, but this time to Iraq. This wasn't new to our family, so we gave him our big usual hugs and kisses and said, see you soon. He told us that when he comes back home, we're gonna celebrate all the holidays that we missed together. But only a couple months later, on February 4, 2004, we got that knock on our door telling us that he was killed. He was only 39 years old. My mom, she lost her soulmate. And my brothers, they lost their superhero. And the one person who understood me was never coming home. The one who brought the most joy and laughter to our family, who was the glue that kept us as one, was gone. I stopped making those wishes and repainted my room. Things changed drastically, but I believed since I was the big sister, I had to have everything under control. I thought I had it all figured out, but once I would make the smallest mistake, I'd crack. And eventually I found myself in this dark hole. It was only a couple years after my daddy's death when I realized that I had completely lost my way and that I stopped being happy a long time ago. I felt like I was stuck and that life seemed so bland. I was losing hope in everything. Being the person that everyone expected me to be and what I believed everyone thought I should be was the center of my focus. I was so used to playing the roles of the good, innocent daughter, the studious Catholic schoolgirl, and the protective older sister. That was all I knew, but all I wanted was to be accepted, to feel that sense of belonging, and to be understood again. And most of all, I just wanted my daddy back. Then, in 2006, my family and I were invited to go to our first TAPS Nationals event in Washington, DC. TAPS stands for Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. It is a nonprofit that was created to serve the families of our fallen soldiers and to provide these families with the support and assistance they need to help them recover emotionally and spiritually from the loss of their loved ones. To be honest, I did not want to go. I was scared and even angry because I thought there's just going to be more people that will tell me how I'm supposed to feel. Well, I was completely wrong. We were welcomed with the biggest hugs and most sincere smiles. And best of all, no one told me how to feel. They let me feel. They let me laugh without feeling guilty about it. They let me cry without feeling weak and they let me be heard. I didn't have to hide who I was or feel ashamed of my story because everyone there knew the pain of losing someone you love from the war. At TAPS, I could feel my daddy's presence because everyone's stories make him and all our fallen soldiers alive again. I was finally not looking for a way to be accepted here. 
In this group of people, we all shared that common bond of losing someone who served. I didn't feel so alone anymore. It was at TAPS where I was finally given the chance to stop and to re-examine my life, to see that I've been so busy trying to pursue the idea of acceptance and perfection. It wasn't right away. In fact, it took several more years for me to realize what I was missing in my life. Wishes, faith, and the freedom and power to make conscious choices for myself. I was afraid to wish upon a star, hesitant of dreaming of new beginnings, and I didn't have the ability to laugh at my mistakes. It finally became clear to me that for practically half of my life, I have been striving for acceptance when I should have been striving for happiness. Now that is the one thing that my daddy never lacked. He was always smiling. He had the most contagious laugh and made everyone his friend. He chose to be happy each and every day of his life, no matter the circumstance. And for a while, I had forgotten that. But now, thanks to the unending support from TAPS, my family and friends, and the new remembrance of my daddy's wish, I realized that I'm stronger than I thought. I know I am capable and confident to take on the challenges ahead. Now, as I became more and more involved with TAPS on a national and international level, I found myself becoming a mentor. This transformation was huge to me because I wanted to share my newfound strength and hope to the kids and my peers in the TAPS program. I wanted them to understand that the choice of being happy was a simple one, but not necessarily an easy one. As a mentor, you start to realize that you're a symbol to your mentees. I wanted them to know that they're allowed to laugh again, to dream again, and to wish again. I have learned that everyone in this world has their own unique stories. But when we start to share these stories and be there for each other through the journey of recovering from trauma and from grief, that is when all these amazing connections start to happen in our lives. Grief is so complex, yet simple at the same time. There are so many textbooks, studies, and rules about what to say and what not to say and psychologists even came up with the different stages of grief. All of these things are beneficial for us and help us work with grieving people. However, just a warm hug can be so healing. And listening can be more powerful than well-intentioned words. From my experience with working with the different families of TAPS, it has shown me that grief is like a circle, but so are the amazing friendships and connections we make. They are all interconnected and infinite. If I had to describe my journey, it would be my search for a new home. I'm not talking about a house, but about that feeling of belonging, where laughter and stillness equals freedom where your own choices are valued and recognized. To me, home isn't just one place. It's wherever you leave the things you love and never have a doubt that it'll still be there when you come back. Home isn't just where the heart is, it's where you're happiest. Now, if there is one core lesson that I have learned and that I hope I can impart to all of you today is that pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. I believe that once a person discovers the power of a simple choice, their own choice, then it is possible to take the path to strive for happiness and leave behind the road, always looking for acceptance. Thank you. Mm -hmm.